Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to another installment of Show to Be with Mike G, the show of life, the show of handsome, the show of San Diego, being married but never again, Puerto Rico, and so much more with today's guest, Veronica Alessandra Flores from Coinop Gas Lamp in San Diego, California. She was recently in town just hanging out, getting to understand, getting to love the city, and a mate, Mr. Kevin Rhodes, made an introduction, and I'm... Very, very proud. I take a lot of pride in this, that this was Veronica's first press, quote unquote, interview. And it is personal. She's very candid, very honest. And I think it was an amazing conversation. So without further ado, I hope you guys enjoy this great chat with Veronica Alessandra Flores. Oddly enough, I was wanting to take another vacation to come and make a second visit back out here. I like hadn't had a vacation in three years. Oh man! Came out here for the first time in September, the day after my birthday, as a sort of treat yourself thing. Yeah. Also to see Hanson. What I heard, I heard that was a great show. Actually, <laughs> it was an amazing show, and every guy who went there reluctantly with like their significant other was one hundred percent dancing. Like they can't even lie. I, I stood in the back and I watched it all happen. This show, if I remember, was this show at Emos? It was at Emos. Okay. That in itself to me is a strange, mangled mess of reality because there's no way you go ten, 10 years ago that Hanson would be playing emos. But it was a yeah. good show. You enjoyed it? It was a great show. It was a great time. And then I went and saw them again in San Diego. And <laughs> all my friends now make fun of me for still listening to Hanson. But it's I'm not, not bad. I don't even feel guilty about it. It's not a guilty pleasure. I'm super stoked on it. That's the best part, right? Really yeah. just liking it because you like it. Oh, yeah. So the second time around, Hanson wasn't playing. There was Pedro the Lion last week, which is depressing enough. But yeah, what was what were some of the things on your list this time as you came back into Austin? I just wanted to like see everybody that I like, made friends with the last time and hung out with, and then yeah. just to explore more of like the food and cocktail scene. Um, it like I didn't get to explore as much as I wanted to the last time, and so this time I enjoyed the fact that I got to ride solo and be like, I'm gonna make a reservation here. I'm gonna go do this by myself. Yeah. And had friends tell me, like, oh, it's really weird you're doing that. Nope. I can have a 10-course chef tasting it by myself, not have to share, That's, and have a great time. I really like that. Yeah. Do you like to go to the movies by yourself? No, because I'm really good at falling asleep in movies. So it's good, essentially like a, yeah. oh, it's a skill that I have, like a $17 nap. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. That, you, when you put a premium on it like that, it's kind of worth taking a nap in a theater. I don't want to pay for a nap when I can just take a nap for free at my house. That's true, too. But then I also realized that it took me three times to watch Wonder Woman because I fell asleep. It's really long. Not I, really, though. I, I thought it's like two and a half hours long, isn't it? I think that's like average for... Not for... Well, movie. I mean, I'm not going to argue, but I, I think that for your, the tight, multi-million dollar blockbuster movie, you're talking an hour and 45, wipe your hands and you're out. So I, I think that the whole first act of taking that time to talk about her the genesis story Mm -hmm. that was a nice detour because normally they don't do that in these movies they don't but at the end of the day when it comes to watching movies i'm gonna fall asleep even netflix stuff or is that even better because you can just do it on the couch if it was in broad daylight i won't fall asleep but the second (laughs) like the stunts the sun starts setting i'm out easily easily well i I like that i mean i naps are a great thing do you think people underestimate the restorative power of naps Oh, 100% they do. I mean, that's just my opinion. No, I think I, it's... What's your idea? I mean, I had this philosophy about naps. So what for you is too long of a nap? Exceeding three hours? Yeah, that's kind of... <laughs> <laughs> so I, I need like a small sleep. Yeah. The whole 30-minute thing, I don't... It takes me 30 minutes just to wind down. So I don't really? know how that works. I don't know, man. I tried it. You think you're asleep and then you are and then you wake up and you're like, oh, a little bit restored. But naps, crucial piece. And as you are, I think you're like 28, 29. Mm-hmm. So you're approaching 30. So you, it's good to get the practice in now. Because once you hit your late 30s, those naps, man, they're so much more coveted. 
Oh, I can only imagine. I'm going to enjoy it right now. <laughs> Mad at little kid me for skipping them. Serious, yeah. But I think I'm catching up, like good. making up for lost time. I think so. I hope so. <laughs> Eating for lost time, which is good. Drinking for lost time. What are a few cocktail bars, if you want to call it that, that you've frequented while you've been in town so far? Um, Always hit up Roosevelt Room. It's where I can cocktail nerd out. Oh, yeah. Um, Even though Dennis is out in Tulum right now. but Yeah, he's off getting hitched. Yeah. But what? at the same time, like... Karen and Matt have taken really good care of me when cool. I've gone over there. So I've had a, a lot of good drinks there. Um, I like just going and bugging the boys over at uh, Firehouse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. New Schwanda. They're, yeah. Love those goats. Yes. Um, also, like, I'll go to Whistler just to kind of check it out and get my Mezcal fix. Mm. And then I just love Nickel City. Isn't that one of the greatest things? Cheap beer and wings. Like, yeah. Fries are fastest no, way to my heart fries are no joke either like yeah the, the mozzarella sticks i mean this place you get a hand selected barrel from mm-hmm. tober and team and then you can eat some fried mozzarella sticks in a way that's kind of the dream job if i could just do that all day eat that and drink that i'd go into early retirement right now i mean it's pretty great just to like have really good wings yeah for like a really low price point, but also I can have a Balvenie 14 year and <laughs> sit in the corner and watch puppy videos on my phone on a, a Friday night. That's like, kind of incredible. In a way that's confusing. It's almost Lynch, <laughs> David Lynchian, right? Because you're like drinking this highbrow whiskey, watching puppy videos, which are for, they're for every, per- every person ever. And, and then, then eating <laughs> a giant <laughs> basket of wings to myself. I mean, I don't know. It's highbrow, lowbrow at its finest, which. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. It's pretty fun. Unassuming. And unpretentious. Some people would debate that I could be pretentious, but I don't know. I also drink Budweiser with Averna in it, so I mean... That is interesting. <laughs> and I think that's a little esoteric, but it doesn't make you pretentious. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think so. Well, it's good. <laughs> You're open to the experiences. You know, when you think about... I was in San Diego well, a few years ago now mm-hmm. and got to go to Noble Experiment, which is interesting. I think Is this still around? Yeah, they're still around. Okay. And I know Anthony was there at that one point. I don't know that he's there anymore. But that was, anyway, a good person that was behind the bar there. The vibe in San Diego is strange to me. And I know that you've, you've lived in California seemingly all, all of your life. Yeah, my whole existence. Whole existence. Coronado High School, just that's in San Diego County. Right? Mm-hmm. And how is the vibe difference? Like being in Austin. Some people call us uber hippie or whatever. But is it similar? Is it different? More laid back? Like, I would say, yes, laid back, kind of, like, in different senses across the board. Like, you have the southern, slower pace of life laid back here. Over there, it's very much, like, I'm in San Diego, kind of surfer-esque, like, beach bum laid back. Um, But definitely still has the vibe of being a busy California city. So, it's weird. Like, to me, I can't really feel like I have, I can relax. I feel like it's just go, go, go all the time. Really? Okay. Like, the hustling and people hustling. Yeah, or maybe I'm just around those kinds of people all the sure. time. Um, like, difference-wise, like, we're friendly in San Diego. Yeah. But here in Austin, like, people have taken time out of their day to show a complete stranger around, and we wind up bouncing from bar to bar for 13 hours. Yeah. Like, I feel like there's a handful of people that I know would do that, and I would do it myself, especially not having experienced it. If someone tells me, like, Oh, I'm visiting San Diego. Cool. Taking the whole day off. Like, let's go do stuff. That's amazing. Let me show you. So it's been cool to see like Southern hospitality with like the not bless your heart right. <laughs> attached to it. No vapors. Oh, the vapors. No, none of that. Yeah. It's, it's, it's we're, just... we're a little more progressive, right? In Austin. If you went yes. to some town in Western Texas, maybe you've been some great towns, El Paso, for instance, but it's just different. We're kind of like a Californian style Texas. It, there's, yeah, I, I feel like it's just like a nice hybrid of south and progressiveness yeah so so it's been good so you've had a good time so far i've had a great time i mean i came back a couple months after coming in september and now i'm trying to think of like when i can get tickets to come back again so yeah. and you're out tomorrow flying out early right uh no i'm on a later flight okay, but okay. yeah go and just jumping right back into the whole swing of things tomorrow and just getting to cap this whole thing off with yep. an introspection a look <laughs> at your life Right, and I do this at radio. I'm trying to be dramatic, you know. Yeah, yeah. No worries. That's how it goes, right? I'm using my hands on a podcast, and you can't even fucking see it. So that's how animated this is. But this foray into hospitality, it seems like, all right, so you're doing the high school thing. You were born and raised in California. Got that kind of laid back, 
cool attitude. And you end up doing pursuing some culinary work at the Culinary Institute of San Diego, I think. Mm-hmm. Right. But in high school, what does Varnock look like in high school? Not literally, right? But what kinds of things were you getting into? I was. This sounds like such a paradox. I was the uh, awkward introverted kid who was also in musical theater. Musical theater. Yep. Interesting. That is always a strange way to express yourself as an introverted kid. Yeah. So in terms, all right. So some musical movies, let's say. Yes. Musical theater. What are some of the few? Some of the few you found pretty amazing at that time like i loved getting to see rent revived yeah. even because i never got to see it when it was initially like first produced but um the creator of it passed away like prior to me being able to actually see it oh wow. yeah um i know there's been a lot of good stuff like i feel like just recently a lot of musicals have been getting turned into movies like the last five years which mm-hmm. i loved as a musical and then all of a sudden anna kendrick's just starring in it now um the last five years. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not um, actually familiar with it. Anna Kendrick, of course, but. Yeah, but then just even just seeing the momentum of just like the Book of Mormon, like more. Yeah. <laughs> like back in high school, none of my friends would have ever have gone with me, but now they're just like, let's go see Hamilton. Let's go see the Book of Mormon. And I'm yeah. like, how were you not like this when you were younger? Because I, these... I was on my own little like island liking these things. That's But that's a really cool. I mean, uh, cool. All right. Cool is in quotes here. But mm-hmm. I, I fancy the same kinds of things. Like. Musicals were an interesting thing to me. You know, classic Hollywood, Singing in the Rain is an incredible movie. You talk about West Side Story and stuff. West Side like Story that. is great, yeah. yeah. And the, the impetus to maybe dance and sing a little bit, does that come from any part of the family where your folks in that kind of. Oh, not industry? at all. No? I was, <laughs> I was, and definitely still am the black sheep of my family. Really? Oh, yeah. Where, does it come from someplace? The only person, like, in my family that really fostered the creative side of me was my grandfather. Like, yeah. may he rest in peace. But, um, no, he he drew a lot and was a really talented artist. And, like, I grew up going to his house. And we would hang out with him for the day. And he'd give us soda water crackers and this uh, this Puerto Rican soda called Malta, which was which is only good cold. It's a super, like, um, it's a malty soda. Yeah, what's the Goya one called? Malta Goya, right? Yeah, Do yeah. you guys have that in California? We have it here in Texas. The only place that I found it in California is at a restaurant called Havana 1920, which serves Cuban food, which is still very similar to Puerto Rican food. And it makes me very happy because oh, I can good. get like my fix of home. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I grew up with my grandpa feeding me soda water crackers and that. And then we would watch Bob Ross and he'd like draw pictures and I'd get really bored and I'd stop drawing pictures myself. And he always like fostered the creativity in me oh, in that. That's great. So yeah, um, even until like... My older years and stuff, he would always be like, she's always the artist. She's always been the artist. When my mom would be like, she quit her office job. He's like, she's always been the artist. Just let her be. Wow. Which was pretty cool. That is great to have some kind of support for that. Yeah. You know? I mean, so my, my mom was a big piano player and she always, she made me take piano lessons. Like as an eight year old. Yeah. Which like I've, I'm kicking and screaming at that point. But then you get to be older and appreciative of all of the cultures, whether they're cool or not. Yeah. So, Fuck, I wish I'd still taken lessons into my 20s. You know? Oh, I still kick myself for quitting piano lessons because, I mean, I was like eight years old and my teacher moved away and heaven forbid I got a new one. Yeah. so It's so difficult, right? <laughs> I mean, I was clearly devastated. devastated. Heaven forbid somebody else take this over. Um, no, I mean, like I wish I stuck with the piano, but I guess I pursued other things and it segued into that. And at a young age, like learning how to read music with the whole like musicals and all yeah. that stuff made it easy. Did you ever play anything beyond piano? No, I never touched anything ever again. Interesting. Yeah. This is a very specific niche industry, <laughs> right? Yeah. So when you think about what maybe college has in store or maybe career doing theater in general, what was the capacity there? Were you going to pursue it, move, move to New York perhaps? I didn't really entertain it. Like going to a performing arts high school and being in a class of people that the best way that I could compare it to was like high school musical. Like when we would... In the morning, I would take regular academic classes. In the afternoon, it would be all the arts-related stuff. Yeah. And when you're the introverted person sitting in the back and, like, all your peers are literally standing on chairs and tables getting excited about this new musical and just busting out <laughs> into song. Like High School Musical, I was like, this is real life for me. All right. This is normal. <laughs> this is normal, apparently. They were all super gung-ho about it. Like, I don't, I think it was just something that I liked that helped me blossom out of my introverted shell and, like, gave me the chance to break out of being the kid in the corner with her nose in a book. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, they, a lot of them, 
went to like conservatories and things like that. And some are pursuing and some have decided to go like a different direction. But I like the experience for what it was. I just never saw myself like doing it professionally. Like once I got to the end of it. Mm. What kinds of things then? Because it's a great crossroads to be in, right? So some people feel obligated, whether it's from their folks or their peers or friends are like, well, I got to go to college now, right? Yeah. It's real stoked. Just have to <laughs> fucking go to college before you. Or people go into hospitality. That's a pretty regular thing. Or they go and they travel and they bike, backpack around or whatnot. So for you, kind of where were you at at that point? I uh, definitely went to the whole do college after high school thing yeah. to keep mom and dad happy. Um, was working in coffee shops at the time. And I, like, I really enjoyed getting to like make something for someone. Yeah. I think I've always loved just being able to create something in some facet. Do you and, like using your hands in that respect? Yes. Yeah. So uh, did you do craft stuff, kind of like maybe collages or working with paper or any of that? Um, I would just kind of experiment with stuff. Like now it's manifested itself into doing calligraphy, which oh, cool. that's been super fun and cathartic for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would work in coffee shops and would go to school and would take a bunch of classes and still couldn't quite figure out what I wanted to do. And um, did a couple internships and came to the terms that I'm not meant for a desk job. Yeah. Um, but did that, graduated what is it? Went to culinary school right after because I couldn't figure out what else to do and the thought of a desk job still sounded pretty miserable. Sure. Uh, it can be miserable. I think it's a science scientifically proven. Yeah, I learned that later <laughs> when I thought it was what I was supposed to do. Oh, it's the worst, right? It's the worst. It was the most miserable two years of my life. What we're supposed to do. What was I supposed to do? Yes. Yeah, yes. Well, you know what? And like we, We'll talk about this in a moment, but supposed to do is, okay? Mm-hmm. What are men supposed to do? What are women supposed to do? What are people supposed to do? They're no, supposed to get su- married, right? They're supposed to have kids and that shit. They're supposed to get married right. in their early 20s so they can have kids at yeah. their later 20s and so they can get a house and do all of these things. And oh, It's preposterous, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I felt obligated, though, you know, to do the college thing, but that was okay. But then mm-hmm. the marriage thing, like, to be a dutiful man, that's, it, that's the thing. That's, we get into these situations where like, oh, fuck, I just got married. Oh, don't I know that experience? <laughs> <laughs> well, so the was that a point, right? So you were married for a brief amount of time. Was that a point where you're thinking, okay, well, now family, starting a family is in the sights. Getting a house is in the sights. Getting a dog, assuming you didn't already have a dog. Like, was that a thing that you were actually... Humoring? Not to criticize. Excuse yeah. Oh, not, not at all. Um, no, I feel like I had the opposite experience. I feel like so many of my friends who got married around that age, yeah. like I felt the pressure because they were doing it. Really? They were starting their own little baby factories at home. Yeah. And I was over here just kind of like, oh, God, I'm not a breeder. Like, this is the worst. <laughs> um, yeah. And it just like that time in my life of that relationship really showed me like a lot of flaws in myself that I had to work on and fix and how I can't be jaded and realize that like a relationship's a bad thing that just wasn't the right one but when you're right. completely changing yourself to make another individual and their family happy and that's when I had my corporate America job yeah like sitting in a desk at the end of it like I reached a point where I was like this is the worst like what am I doing I'm sitting in my car crying every single day like I don't know what's happening I'm wearing J crew and covering my <laughs> tattoos like what the hell is wrong with me <laughs> man um yeah, and then had that now ex-spouse just, like, harping on having babies. And I'm like, I haven't even traveled yet. There's so many things I want to do. Like, you want to save money for, like, a house that I'm not even ready to have because yeah. I still want to travel and go do other stuff and, like, go have fancy dinners. Like, go to San Francisco and do a chef's tasting and you're not into this. Oh, God, like, what am I doing? Man. So it was just one of those realizations. And I had, yeah, like, that catalytic moment where I was like, I'm – I'm not even myself right now. Like, yeah. so. So when you think about where you took this turn, right? And yeah. It's a good turn. So we, we get off the highway every now and again. We hit right back on the yeah, path. You can always get right back on. There's right. like always maybe, an exit and entrance. So totally. And it may be a year, maybe two years. Hopefully it doesn't last more than a few years, but sometimes it does. But like yeah. that initial pressure, like push, was that from your family? Was it from the peers or was it from you ultimately? Like that internal push. I think a combination of all of it. Like this was what I was around. Like this is the kind of lifestyle that the people I was surrounded with were used to. And 
I felt the pressure of it in some sense, like didn't recognize it then at all. I was like, this is what we're supposed to do. Like date right. for this amount of time. There's supposed to be a ring on my finger now. And like supposed to have this big ceremony and whatever. Oh. I mean, I'm just, I'm sorry. Maybe sometimes these interviews become a little bit of an opportunity for me to kind of like vent just a little bit too. Oh, yeah, no, go for it. Dude, like, oh, Valentine's Day, right? Okay. For you, what is the, assuming that you maybe have a boyfriend, maybe don't, whatever, right? Uh, No, living and very much enjoying that single life. (laughs) Great, amazing. Yeah. So for you, if you had a partner that you were very fond of that was like you, for valentine's day what is like just the perfect valentine's day because if you ask the prototypical woman that i've read about and that are in Mm rom-coms they want those flowers they want that chocolate they want some kind of piece of jewelry it's fucking rubbish the whole thing but for you what's like the ideal valentine's Day? everything you just listed sounds like complete garbage to me i'm i'm just so atypical like i just found humor in the fact that I was flying out here and I had a reservation initially for one for Valentine's Day by myself at Odd Duck. Oh, and <laughs> I loved it. Um, and even just going to Barley Swine like a couple of days later by myself. Um, ideal Valentine's Day. Honestly, I would rather sit at home with my dog and my future next partner yeah. with beer and a giant thing of wings. Like, totally. I don't want to get fancy. I don't want to go out and be forced to dress up because everybody else is dressing up and we're stuck with a prefix menu that's potentially really disgusting. Oh, yeah. Um, it's basic being, bitch shit. It I mean, is basic bitch, bitch shit. Bitch without any sexual assignment. It just is basic shit. It's super basic. Yeah. And I'm just not into that. And, like, also working in this industry, like, I see it all the time and it just sounds awful. Yeah. Like, I'd rather not celebrate the <laughs> just sit and eat wings and drink beer that's so much better like and be a homebody i bought a bunch of spanish meats and cheeses and bought a bottle of Montiano, and we shared an amazing plate charcuterie plate and then we ate some pizza yeah dude that was great and i'm like this is it's finally someone gets me yeah i would rather do that like i would rather invest in a nice bottle of something yeah. that we can like drink a little bit too much of because we're celebrating of whatever course. and then Build a dope charcuterie board because, I mean, cured meats, like, who doesn't love that? I'll tell you what. Have you ever had to roll ham on off, off those damn pieces of, like, plastic? I cannot get a clean roll. Of, really? <laughs> it stuck together so bad. It looked like I was basically like, ripping it off the animal itself. I mean, someone's going to have to teach me at some point. It was horrible. It One of like, these days, yeah. No, it's just, I don't know, just the very atypically traditional stuff just because yeah. I... I don't know, the traditional stuff just doesn't appeal to me. Like, I don't even like wearing jewelry because it feels like little handcuffs on my body. Right. So, But tattoos, on the other hand. Tattoos I'll get any day of the week. <laughs> I spend, I drop money on two things, plane tickets and tattoos. Everything else, like clothes and whatever, ugh, not interested. Uh, I feel you. Good. Well, I'm going to toast to that. I don't have any tattoos, but I'll pay for a bottle of whatever and a ticket to wherever. I don't judge. I'll Cheers. <laughs> hey, Tennessee, that'd be great. I'll go there. Now I'm going to Nashville next. Mm. I didn't even know that. But I just, there people have been going to Tennessee lately. But this travel <laughs> bug, right? Does this come from some place as well? Or this is also like. This, I've just always had it. Like, what is it, nine years ago, I had an internship um, working for like this music based company. And so we had a lot of bands coming in and out. Yeah. And befriended this band that was based out of Atlanta, Georgia, who figured out very early on that I'm a bit of a workaholic, like going to school, had a full-time job and had an internship on top of it. Like, what does she do with her free time? Nothing. (laughs) So they convinced me that I needed to take a vacation. Um, And I was like, I, where? Yeah. Like, where am I supposed to go? They're like, Atlanta. I was like, and stay with who? They're like, with us. So I bought a one-way plane ticket because I was like, if I hate it, I can just buy one right back. And if I love it, then I'll stay until I need to come home. Oh, yeah, so. I was out there for two and a half weeks. I slept on a lot of floors and a lot of couches, just kind of bounced around and like That's made the a bunch. Life. Of, yeah, I made a bunch of friends, and like I mean, nine years later, I've been going out there a couple times a year to still see these friends, and I'm still pretty close with. That's am- I, I admire that a lot. I just like I made it. Now I have an agreement with myself after having done a little bit of touring and sleeping in weird places. Yeah. I don't want to sleep on floors anymore. I won't sleep on floors. Like you have a okay, guest good. bedroom. You have a guest bedroom bed for me, or like I will Airbnb something. That doesn't make me egotistical, does it? That I don't want to sleep on floors at thirty years old. 
No, that it's doesn't fine. make you egotistical. Like, I think that's totally fine. Like, I'm 28 turning 29. I don't want to sleep on floors. Like, I did that. I'm yeah. past my college years. I don't. I can shell out a little bit of money to, like, be kind of comfortable. I, it could even be a cot. Like, I don't even care if it's a nice cot or even a fucking series of beanbags. Like, it doesn't matter to Just me. Just take me off the floor. <laughs> no floors. Exactly. <laughs> Just get me off the floor. Thank you. Yeah, so ever since then, it's just like if I can find an inexpensive plane ticket somewhere and like a place to stay or someone can connect me with someone, like I'll just go and explore. It's a great way to do it because now's the time to do it. You're able-bodied, as they say, right? And as long as you keep healthy, man, you can travel the world without any... I mean, you can recover pretty well to this great thing about the industry. It's nice being part of a community. And it's nice having people give you whiskey. (laughs) But it is a double-edged sword. It totally is like hurting the next day, but then you can have the hair with the dog and just <laughs> try your best to muster up energy and start all over. Keep rallying, right? Yeah, that's kind of in my trip. I like <laughs> so that. No, it's great. <laughs> Punctuated by great glasses of great spirits, including bottled and well, it's not bottled and bond, but hundred proof old forester birthday bourbon and the fourteen year balvenie. Yes, brilliant one too. Cream yes. cask, love that shit. Oh, it's delicious. A little too. Too delicious, actually. Uh, yeah, no. <clears throat> I, uh, I cringed just a little bit. Had a night with that one, but I digress. Yep. You emerge from normality and conforming to all these things you think are the right thing to do. You emerge from this in a different place. And what was the first thing you did to, in other, in some sense, start your life anew? I think it just started like once that relationship ended, pretty much a lot of things in my life, I just wanted to close the door and I was like, none of these things are me. Yeah. Um, the way I was able to transition to hospitality was, it was funny, like I was this regular at this ramen and craft beer bar in San Diego since they which, had opened. Which one is it? Underbelly. I've been there. So I was a regular there, I would go there multiple times a week. I saw every employee and management change under the sun. Like it got to the point when, when I'd get bottles of like beers from the east coast i'd bring them straight there and being like guys i got this like really cool like stout or whatever from this brewery that you can't get out here yeah. and i would just share that with them became friends with them fast forward like three or four years later i like after a really shitty day at that corporate job that i had i walked in and my friend who was the manager was just like i have a bone to pick with you and i was like oh fucking great like here we go Uh-oh. and i was <laughs> just like whatever just pour me a beer i'm gonna sit down and i was like what did I do to make you upset? He's like, no, it's nothing bad. Like, I just want to ask you something. A good bone? And I was just like, first of all, you never say that to somebody if it's a good <laughs> thing. And I was like, never. that phrase means that you're very upset and like, shit's about to go down. Yeah. Um, and so he looks at me, he's like, no, I had a food runner quit on me. Like, he's like, I know it's a small start compared to what to used to, but I know that you've also been super unhappy with your job. Like, maybe entertain the idea of changing over. And I was like, let me think about it took no thought like I was like this is my out this is I like this place obviously I've been coming here they I've spent a lot of money here I like these people already so I sat there and I wrote my resignation and sent it while drinking a beer and eating ramen I love it so that was my in I started to fall in love with craft beer and then just kind of sought out other opportunities after that and how long would you say this chapter of being immersed in the hospitality realm how long has that been now it's been about three years three years yeah it'll be yeah it's been about three years yeah, did the food running thing, just kind of like got my feet wet with that, realized that I could pursue my love of flavor without having to be in the kitchen. Yeah. And bartending, which takes the whole like barista lifestyle that I hadn't known once before, being able to socialize and like still be in front of people and like have those connections with guests and like still get to know them because I missed having regulars, like yeah. knowing their stories, like being able to be like, oh, hey, like how's your grandson or congratulations, you're engaged, like just all these fun things to celebrate with them. And you, and again, could, have a tangible thing you can give them. Yes. Which at the is end, a great thing. Yes. So I get to create, have those relationships. And then that started the route of me seeking a position as a bar prep because I wanted to earn my stripes. Yeah. So, so you've worked. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I won't sleep on floors. We've agreed we both won't sleep on floors. Anymore. No floors. There's in the indie rock world, in the touring band world, and I use this analogy probably too much, but putting drums together. And carrying amps upstairs, those are things you have to do. There are the tasks where you've got to hand out flyers, you've got to carry amps and set them up, right? There's these steps. And it sounds like you're following, it's not a protocol, but it's kind of like this agreed like dynamic in the industry that you have to pay some dues. And it sounds like you're doing that. 
are you patient enough to kind of go through those stages and learn everything you need to learn before advancing to the next? Yeah, I mean, I wanted to learn them. It was very atypical for, I mean, or so I'm learning that it's very atypical for girls to start as a prep and then work as a bar back, which I'm very grateful that I work for a company that took the chance to interview me, offered me the position with the caveat that, like, this is the job description. Like, can you do this? Yeah. And then there was the whole keg lifting thing, and I was like, I can't do that now, but I'll learn. Yeah. And they took me on with that. I can change kegs by myself into a low boy, but second year, like, I'm going to ask for help. Like, I'm small. At the end of the day, I'm small. Like, physiologically, (laughs) shouldn't do this, but didn't want to stop me, and I'm grateful that they, like, took me on and gave me the chance and still, like, running around with all the boys just, like, (laughs) doing stuff. But I like it. It's been fun to, like, earn my stripes that way. Um, Apparently very atypical from the whole, like, server to bartender for girls but i figure that if a guy can do it why can't i and like why shouldn't i earn my stripes the way they do yeah ain't nothing gonna break your stride so. i had to say that i was just listening to that song but yes that's how <laughs> yeah. it is so being a strong female one that will become even more influential <laughs> as your time in this industry enlarges do you feel any duty maybe too strong of word but any kind of responsibility to your peers that are women and making sure that you set a good example for them i don't know you know i'm a white guy it's pretty easy yeah. for me just to be whatever and it's like fine i don't have to be too conscious of it you know um i i have had some interesting conversations with fellow females in this industry um i more so have seen more positive out of it like other girls who have wanted to get their feet wet and like get behind the bar but don't know how to and are so used to the whole like stigma like oh this is how a guy does it mm-hmm. I've seen me doing they're just like hey like I offered to start bar backing and they told me as long as I try to move a keg like with a dolly like they'll give me the chance and I was like do it fucking do it like yeah. take that chance and go and if you need help like let me teach you what I've learned like thus far like I I want to I don't know like I've had to go to the bottom and my stripes like two years later I'm still I still have like bar prep shifts like I'm doing everything like yeah. bar prep bar back bartending I'm doing all three and until like they tell me they don't have to do something anymore like I'm gonna keep doing it um but other, it's been cool to see other girls just be like, oh, like, I want to do this because I saw you do it. And I was like, oh, it's so cool. If I can do it, then you can do it. Yeah. But on the flip side, I've also had conversations with other girls that have told me that um, I'm somehow creating unrealistic expectations with, like, me going not the server to bartender route, right. which recently had a conversation regarding that. And all I said was, like, at the end of the day, like, we've been fighting for gender equality in so many different facets. Like, expecting special treatment makes it reverse sexism, and at that point, nobody wins. Like, I see I see personally a job description on paper. It's sure. black and white. It knows no gender. That's right. And if you're being offered this chance, it means that whoever you're working with is willing to, like, see it as this gorgeous shade of gray, like, that it's not girl or guy can only do this. Like, mm-hmm. anybody can do this as long as you're willing, and, like, how can we support you so it happens? Like, if you look at it that way, I feel like anybody can do any of that. I think so too. I think that's a great way to look so, at it. It's like here's some words on a page, interpret them how you will, but they really just are words on the page, you know. That's and, all it is, and so it's been cool to see like positive movement in regards to like that equality being established, or at least from what I've seen. And like, there's going to be that point one percent that's going to have a negative opinion on it, and that's fine. Do what you want to do, but at the end of the day, I'm pretty proud of the way I've moved up. And if anybody yeah. else wants to do it the same way, like, please let me help you. Yeah, it's great. We've seen a lot of this, we'll call it nationally. I mean, it probably is a global epidemic, but do you think it's finally reaching a point with sexual harassment where people are talking about it in a productive way? It's no longer in the shadows kind of thing? I feel as if it is being talked, I feel like it's being talked about more. I feel like at least more people are realizing like that some things that they've done in the past that they've they felt like have been okay are now very wildly inappropriate Mm -hmm. um if anything it's like making people realize like oh cool like as an example probably shouldn't throw ice jokingly at my coworkers' cleavage like because things like that happen and they think it's funny and like oh in the moment like it's not a big deal it is though yeah well that's a bit rude if nothing else yeah, but it's just an example um but yeah no it's been cool to see like other people at least in the san diego community like people being okay speaking out, having people rally around them, and then trying to figure out a way to resolve this so it doesn't happen again, mm. and at least like having that support system. 
I think that's yeah. I think that we've had these conversations, and it's it's been strange because it's something worth having a conversation about, which is a little more nuanced, right? Because if you if we go to places that are pretty simple to get information, like Twitter or Facebook, it seems polar, right? Me versus you, but just because I'm a man, just because you're a woman, right? We're diametrically opposed, but it's never like that. There's minutia in this thing. Yeah, there totally is. I mean, I feel like people also too like it's a double edged sword. Like, want to get on their soapbox via social media and. Right state like whatever they want to say hashtag me too when realistically if something's happened to me like i've had the conversations on my own being like hey super not okay with this if this happens again like it's it's gonna become a problem and i don't want it to um and like at the end of the day we're all humans like we all make mistakes and if it's if there's a way to resolve it like let's do that yeah i mean could be constructive. I mean, We're all going to mess up at some point. Yeah, well, absolutely. And th- at least the one thing that we can count on in the hospitality industry is that there is a thread of warmth within us all. There's always going to be a means of support. Like, yeah. that's one thing I've learned, too, like, even coming from another state. I mean, there's going to be a means of support. Like, I'm going to have a means of support, like, here, and I'm just the chick from San Diego. Yeah. I have a means of support in Atlanta because I've made friends out there. Again, just the girl from San Diego, but it's been really cool to kind of see like that warmth in that family of this like very niche industry that I got into by way of me needing to quit my job and drinking beer and eating ramen and being offered that to seeing it grow and evolve and like have this whole family aspect just across the nation. And like, who knows, at some point, maybe across the globe, but you never that's the lovely part about it. I love it. I love it. There's no closed door. Not at all. You There's going to be someone here for you, like always. Absolutely. I think it's a lovely thing. And the limited experience I have with San Diego, I got to visit a couple great spots, didn't get to visit Polite Provisions. But how's the scene? You know, you've been in Austin, you've been imbibing, you've been eating some great food. What's the scene like in San Diego right now in terms of cocktails? Cocktail scene, like it's changing and growing and evolving so much. Like there's been... A lot of transition, like, from the USBG with that moving into a positive trajectory. And, like, the guy that's our president right now, I love him wholeheartedly as a human being. Like, he's taking this position and taking it by the reins and creating opportunities for people to talk about things that aren't getting talked about and or finding ways to support each other. Like, one of our fellow friends, like, has to have a surgery that's going to take him out for a while. And we're hosting a fundraiser for him to help him out because, I mean... Why shouldn't we be helping each other out? Um, he point. he created a program as like a mentorship understudy program for like greener bartenders and barbacks that it's a six month mentorship program that applications just went out for to fill out just to get the chance to like stage and get mentored by the people in the community, which I think is really cool. Sure. So there's really great stuff happening just like on our side of things. But in regards to like the consumer, um, the guests at bars, it's been really cool to see a lot of great bars pop up the whole united mentality of like how do we deliver a wonderful guest experience like they're not just customers they're not a transaction like they're a guest how do we change our mindsets to make it better because we want them to come back and want them to remember us and yeah. it's been really cool to see that happen and coin up this is the second location right yeah and that's this is the one you work on yes too. and i had a conversation about nes earlier because that's how you talk i mean that's how my nights go i talk about nintendo <laughs> but you gotta have a favorite game Oh, I am. Is there one that you like? I'm so bad at every game. I'm so <laughs> bad at it. Like I'm, I'm inclined and talented in so many other things, but I try my darnest at skee ball. Oh, uh, skee ball's great. Skee ball's great. Organic game, right? Skee ball's great. Some days I'm really good at it, and I'm like hitting stuff. And other days I'm just like, man, those ten pointers. <laughs> <laughs> but the bane of your existence. But also, my '80s movie knowledge is pretty on par because we play those too. Okay. So let's talk about that for a second. Yes. Because again, any chance I get to talk about the 80s, this is an amazing thing for me. What, if you think about 80s characters, strong female characters, Molly Ringwald obviously comes to mind for a lot of Mm -hmm. reasons, but is there one that you align with and you kind of feel like, yeah, you guys are singing the same tune? I honestly don't. Like most of the movies that we've played have been very dude centric, but I think that's just kind of like what people recognize like coming to america gets played a lot um you're not a strong female character in that movie really no and then we play honey i shrunk the kids a lot we play a lot of bob ross which i think is great because bob ross is so 
awesome, especially when he t- starts talking about beating the dickens out of a brush. I just yes. think it's hilarious. Um, I put on the gummy bears the other day. I don't know if you remember that. Yes, I do. Um, gummy bears. Da, 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 da. Yeah. I don't know the, the lyrics, obviously. Great show, though. It's a great show. What else? We put on Bill and Ted's Great Excellent Adventure all the time. Yeah. We also play, there's one other movie we play all the time. Oh, Never Ending Story, which that movie is depressing. It's really depressing. Yeah, as a kid, I didn't realize. And then like watching it so many times, I'm like, this is the worst. Of like, course, like the, nothing right. good happens in this. The world yeah. explodes at the end. Why, <laughs> why did I even like dies? this? Is, it, is that the horse's name, Atreyu? Atreyu dies. Yeah, yeah he like that's sinks into the swamp. Yeah. I, I almost can't even talk about it. This and then still it's, oh, it's the worst movie. I just don't understand. It's beautiful, but as an adult movie. Not as a kid movie, just because it's a kid. I mean, as a kid, I think you just see like the magical creatures and things and right. don't really like piece together everything. <laughs> the, the, but the tragedy. <laughs> you watch it later and you're just like, the world still explodes at the end. Like, what's good about this? Yeah, right. Oh, well, that's part of the this may of being an adult and having the ability to have critically analytical skills. Yeah. It's a horrible thing, actually. I wish I didn't have that. No, I wish I didn't ruin, like, I wish... Like the innocence of me watching that movie as a kid just like stayed as opposed to me seeing it as an adult like multiple times a week. I'm just like, man, childhood ideas destroyed. Can somebody please put on like the gummy bears again? At least that has a positive ending. Yes, there's never, none of those guys die. None of them die. Never. They just drink their, never die either. Smurfs never die. No, they just drink their bouncy juice and go on their way. Yeah, it's really, really pretty. A positive message don't die and drink a lot and get bouncy, which I think is a very important message for us as adults in the hospitality industry, obviously. Drink your happy juice. Yes, drink your happy juice <laughs> in moderation. <laughs> and so you're still at the lion's share as well? Yeah, I'm still at the lion's share. The lion's share is my baby. Um, I started there two years ago. That's where they started me as a bar prep and mm. gave me the chance as a bar back. And then we're coin up and lion's share part of the same company. So when oh, the new cool. coin op opened up, they pulled me over there to be a hybrid bar back bartender. Um, I love that place. I feel like lion's share is like one of San Diego's best kept secrets, like mm. no pretension, a lot of us that work there were regulars there before we got hired on, so we all work at our favorite bar, <laughs> which I think is pretty amazing. But the staff there is amazing, and like they truly showed me and like taught me like what a family is in regards to like a bar setting, like the things that some of us have gone through just on a personal level, and they um, help us out and like take care of us. Like we stand alongside each other and just like support each other through the struggles, which has been pretty amazing. Like they did that with me, yeah. and I went through some hard stuff, and we've done that with other people, like. They're like, nope, we're family. We're going to stick by you. Like, sometimes life really sucks, but we're still here. I love but it. even so, when it comes to, like, a bar program thing, it's pretty fun. So you're saying that if I go to San Diego, I've got to go to Lion Share. You have to go to Lion Share. You have to have those antelope sliders, and you have to have my coworkers, specifically Jason O'Brien, make you a cocktail because he's going to geek out, and he teaches me so many things and quizzes me all the time, but I love it. Geeking out's good. It's oh, one it's of my great. favorite things. Yeah. It comes off as pretentious sometimes, but when you're with a fellow geek, it's, it's not. serendipitous. But except they'll quiz me being like, Veronica, like, where does Spring Bay come from? And I'm just like, oh, do I have to do this Hamilton, right now? But what, whatever. I know. I'll be like matter. Hamilton. Yeah, or he'll be like, <laughs> and he's like, what do you call people from Orkney? I'm just like, that's still the worst word, but Orcadians, because you taught me this at two o'clock in the morning one time and kept quizzing me on it. <laughs> Silly stuff like that. I but I, I love him for it. It like caters to the academic mindset that I have to, for learning stuff. So, sure. Well, you've had brilliant trip in austin i'm sure you'll be back you're gonna head to tennessee probably take another trip to atlanta get to travel all over the place so mm-hmm. i have a few more questions for you before you leave town tomorrow the first one is we're sipping some fine bourbon here which is a lovely thing mm-hmm. on a monday night too no less but if you're at your favorite bar it doesn't matter where anywhere in the world and you're sipping some bourbon and you could have a conversation with anybody living or deceased who might you like to sit down and chat and wax poetic with? Oh, man, I'm so bad at answering this question because I'm just like, I don't know if there's any, like, individual that I want to want to sit and chat with. Like, celebrity-wise, I'm like, people are cool. I think I'd want to talk to Anna Kendrick just because after reading her book, I'm like, we're both really weird musical theater kids, yeah. and, like, now you're in Hollywood, and I'm working behind the bar. <laughs> but at least let's share the love of musical theater. Um other than that, like, I think I've just really enjoyed the opportunity to meet strangers, like, while I'm out and about, because yeah. I've had some pretty interesting conversations on just, like, who they are, how they are, human nature, their loves and dislikes of things. Like, I enjoy those interactions a lot more. Than someone that's 
got some baggage before you like they've got some cachet before you even start talking to them i mean they're celebrities and i think in my head i want to keep them as just whatever i think they are and Mm -hmm. leave that be and we get to enjoy them being in a movie because what if they wind up being really mean and then i'm gonna wind up or well they had a bad day and so they wind up being really mean and i sabotage that for myself and i'm like wow we'll never like this actor actress ever again it's a great point and it's happened to a few people I know where they've spent some quality time with people that were not quality people. <laughs> yeah, and so, I don't know, I would rather not taint that for myself and just keep that weird little created idea of who I think they are in my head and instead just, like, talk to an individual at the bar who either is, like, brave enough to approach me when I'm, like, zoning out watching <laughs> puppy videos on my phone because I've met really cool people that route. Yeah. And I think that's one of my favorite experiences, too, about just, like, this hospitality scene. You never know who's going to be sitting next to you. No. It's... Quite amazing, actually. And I yeah. don't say that exa- in, with exaggeration. I think that it truly is. You can go to any hotel bar, for instance, in the world, and you'll always find someone interesting, and you'll always strike up a conversation. Everybody's yeah. got such a great story to tell. Like, even people that I've met in the bar industry, too, like, we all have such different backgrounds. Some of us grew oh, up yeah. in it. Some of us used to be architects and left that because it made us miserable. Right. People like me used to be regional sales managers and <laughs> left that and like came in. Crate and Barrel, is that that one? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I know. I almost saw you roll your eyes, but you don't roll your eyes, which, which I appreciate. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, it's just, I don't know. I'd rather learn other people's stories and, like, learn where they came from. And, like, people are fascinating. Yeah, they really are. All right, so my last question for you. Yeah. You stepped into the hospitality industry. It seems like it's given you a lot. It's given you things when you needed it. You have an academic and intellectual outlet. You have probably an emotional outlet. You've got the ability to achieve what you want because there is no ceiling, as you've put it and kind of demonstrated. Do you want to open your own place? Do you want to be a brand person? What do you think is one of these these next chapters for you? I thought of the idea of like a brand person because it has the allure of getting to travel. Yeah. Um, but then like at the end of it, I think like in my heart of hearts, I would really just love to open up a spot like team up with somebody like a couple good friends and create this wonderful concept of like great drinks great food i wouldn't want to do just a straight bar like i like food too much (laughs) um a wing joint how about a wing no oh no wings for family meal but we'll get a little bougier with our food yeah also like i don't want to share my wings with anybody that's also fair but no i would love to open up my own spot at some point like right now i have a lot to learn still and Mm -hmm. upside is i have a lot of great people to teach me but when the chance comes for me to like work my way up and be part owner of something with someone, wherever it may be, um, I'm definitely going to jump on that and take that risk and hopefully take all the knowledge that I've gained up until this point to create like the same environments that I've been brought up in hospitality wise. Yeah. Um, when it comes to like company culture inside of the four walls, like I want there to be blurred lines between kitchen and front of house. You're part of the same family. Yeah. You're going to ask each other how your days are going. You're going to share the same family meal. And then just like with the guests, like they're your guests. They're sitting in your, this is your house. Like make them love it and make them want to come back. Do you, oh, and I would ask you this last one. I just, <laughs> I thought about this because this concept of family I think is really important. Yeah. How does your family feel about this move? Since it's not what one might consider conventional. <laughs> they're still learning to like it. Yeah. Once I, you give them that, do they drink? No, I come from a very conservative, non-drinking family. Oh, no. <laughs> Puerto Rican? People? Yeah. Jeez, they don't drink at all? No, not really. That's that's a shame. I mean, I don't know. Again, black sheep, more yeah. for me, I guess. Oh, that's a good point. My dad finally is drinking cocktails now in his 70s. Took him uh, 30 years, maybe, <laughs> but a long time. So it's always good, and it, I think there will be that opportunity to finally share that stuff. Bring them around, as you said. So. I'll hopefully embrace it. Like, I think at this point, they've learned that I'm just going to keep doing what I feel is right. And yeah. they can either embrace it or not. But sure. I think they know that, like, they need to just learn to love and appreciate it. I feel like one day they'll see. I'm sure they will. Seem to be making the right moves. Good moves for you. Good moves for your career. So I doubt they're going to have any reason to doubt it at some point. One of these days, I'll keep my fingers crossed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, speaking of random people meeting, Kevin was escorting you around and he introduced us and I just found it to be a pleasure chatting with you thank you so much for taking the time out to sip some whiskey with me thanks for taking time to talk about love and all this fucking shit that we go through i think it's a very shared experience and it's really nice to have a chat so yeah travels yeah yeah thank you so much thank you well there we have it what do you guys think veronica alessandra flores of coin op 
Gas Lamp San Diego. Great scene there. She is in one of the first chapters of what will be a massive career in the hospitality industry. Has already had many twists and turns musically, creatively, educationally, romantically, but this is a great foray into her life and a hopefully, you know, you come back in five, ten years and you think, man, this conversation was a certain moment in time, but a very lovely one and at just the beginnings of something great. So thanks everybody for listening to Show to V with Mike G. No matter if you're watching 30 Rock again from the start for the second time, or if you're thinking solo, I don't know if I buy that guy as a young Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford is dapper and attractive. This guy's kind of doofus-y looking. Don't know. Please keep dancing.